So the best bits, the worst bits, the debate, the preliminary, the preliminary final integrity, PFI, the curiosity, they got that right, they got that wrong, and then ultimately the seedings. That's what we have to work through. The pressure index has immediately two teams in it, and you can feel that from the snap judgments that have landed. As you wait all summer, Essendon dreadful, and St Kilda, sometimes I think the worst thing you can be is plain, and they felt plain. The Bombers first. Ah, oh, the Bombers... If you, if you engage in, in, in a role inside the centre bounce, inside the centre square, you're in there because you are one touch and you are, you are tough. You, you, you're engaging in four on four. And because of the new 666, it's four on four for the best part because wingmen hold out now. They don't charge in. So it's four on four for about six seconds. So if you're not up for the fight, eventually you will break. They looked meek. They looked fumbly. They weren't one touch, which questions what, why weren't they one touch? Is it, it's certainly not a skill issue. They're, they're equipped. They weren't hard enough. They weren't ready for it. And, and it wasn't all Patrick Dangerfield and the big bodies of, uh, you know, Guthrie and Selwood and these guys. It, it was Parford. It was Holmes. It was, it was anyone who went in there. So the, the Bombers have got some soul searching to do really quickly. It's, it's almost like they've been told they've been good for six months. And we can't wait to see you. And it also highlights the fact that Jake Stringer, he, he wallpapers over a lot of cracks at Essendon. There's a lot of people who don't want to like Jake Stringer as a player. They don't. They don't want to recognise that last year he was probably one of the top five or six players in the competition. Not on not in, on the Brownlow and maybe not even on the Coaches Award. Don't even know where he finished there. But in terms of delivering at a centre bounce and creating scores, he was sorely missed on Saturday. And they just needed that. They needed that physicality. Because it was as meek a performance as you've ever seen. And even once they'd lost possession, the Cats were able to waltz around with the football. It was, it was just bizarre to see it. It was almost like they'd turned up for a training session. So they, they've, got, they, they, they've got to be spinning. Their heads would be spinning on the way to training today. And there's no way they can turn up with any surety on what they're going to get next week. Can you imagine five minutes before the bounce next week? I don't even know who they play next week. I haven't even had a look. But can you imagine what the, Ben Rutten would be thinking five minutes before the start? I think they play Brisbane. Yeah, and yeah. then they got Melbourne. That's what they, they got a really rough start to the season. So there's no time to waste. It, they, they, their seasons very quickly become a fork in the road. Which way do they go? Do they, do they, do they accept all, all problems and, and front up today to training and have their leaders put their hand up and say, hey, you know what? It's, don't, don't look around the room to the young players. This one's on me. Does Zach Merritt do, do, do that? Does Andrew McGrath do that? I don't know if they do. And maybe we're going too far with it outside looking in, but it's time is of the essence. Saturday twilight, Marvel against the Brisbane Lions, who are, are one of the standard bearers. And St Kilda? The Saints did so much. They do a lot right, the Saints, and then, and then they do a lot wrong. And, and when they get it wrong... That they allow the opposition to just do too many things, and, and Saints supporters say, "Oh, you come at us all the time. We come at you all the time because you're a better side than what you than what you show, than what you deliver." Saints fans should be angry. They shouldn't be angry at us being critical or, or breaking down the way the Saints play. I, I don't know how many times I can show the same pieces of vision of Saints small forwards getting forward of the contest. And if they win it, they are off and they get individual reward. But if they, if they don't win it, it becomes a 5v1 going the other way in a heartbeat. And everything about our game is about territory, locking the ball in, creating turnover, you know, playing the game in your half. They, they allow the game to be too free-flowing. And Colin, we've got that forward handball game going that they've practised for about five minutes. And they looked awesome because they were afforded some luxuries. They had to drag Collingwood into the trenches and say, we've been playing like this for three years. You blokes are still finding your way. But it, it didn't happen. So I, I wonder what the fallout is from there. It's about shifting standards. So we've talked about this for weeks and weeks and weeks. And by all reports, Brett Ratton called out, called out Jack Higgins at three-quarter time for, for the non-give to Gresham, who would have strolled in. And, if I'm a Saints player, I want Gresham to have the footy. I don't care where he is on the ground. So if he's free, we give it to him. He, he, he burnt him. He burnt him large after being disrespectful of previous couple of plays. And for me, if you're going to shift standards, you've got to make a statement. 
Higgins shouldn't play this week. And people say that's way too harsh. Way too harsh. But you've got to do something that shakes the, shakes the fabric of the place at the moment. Looked at him, didn't give it to him. Yeah. And it was perplexing in the moment. And, and that's okay. Dennis Pagan used to say something. So if you're not going to engage without the footy, you have to do something pretty special with it. I'm not sure four points is, is pretty special with it. And he gave – his, his chases were either all in or all out. There's no in between. There's no, there's no 100% of the time, 100% effort. It's, it's sometimes. It's sometimes football. And that, that doesn't, it doesn't help you as a group. The best bits <laughs> were the newbies. <laughs> so Bone Crusher and now Waverly Star, you're probably <laughs> going to have to now <laughs> delineate which of Horn Francis and Dacos is which because I feel like Rochelle is at Talak and Nick Martin is Dandy Andy. Wow. Well, Jared, we've only just jumped. We've this is the you're a race caller. What a jump! You can't call the you can't call the winner after they've just left the barriers. But it was a fantastic jump, wasn't it? Wasn't it exciting to see new faces? The game has an extraordinary capacity for renewal. So, can we just sort of just you know fluff around for a sec, yep. right? So we had sixty five draft picks last year, sixty five national draft picks, one preseason pick. So that's sixty six. Then we had twenty six rookies. So that's that's ninety. Sorry, that's ninety two, and then we had seventeen players taken in the post season draft, the add ons. So let's call it's ninety nine. Let's call it a hundred players. So we had pick one, pick one, do his thing with the Kangas. He was he was pretty good, not as good as what pick four was for the for the Pies, Nick Dacos, and not as good as pick six was with Josh Rosselli. So that's the absolute pointy end, and then you get the guys that are closer to a hundred, Jared, Jack Hayes. And Nick Martin, it just shows you that there's no there's no absolute right way, wrong way. You know, list builds are about taking some gambles, some speculative picks. Now I don't know if Jack Hayes will ever do that again. Mature body, you know, and, and everything fell for him. Even when he was coming from the ground, you yeah. said on was it, was you said yeah, this time. Yeah, on, yeah. on crunch time. Even when he was coming from the ground, the ball found him, and he was out of gas. Um, but it was just great to see. It's just so refreshing, and the, the half the stand was filled with his mates and his family. Um, so it was just, it was just awesome. I, I don't think I've seen a player look so comfortable as what Martin did, and thank God he was there, because at least Essen had something to talk about on the and the fans had something to talk about on the way home. I did tell you if you've got a couple of dollars spare, Rochelle's worth just a little look. Yep. Put it in the Herald Sun magazine that he'll carry a little bit of mine, um, just because he he's a freak around goals. But this this crop is 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 quite special, isn't it? We haven't, we haven't the ones we haven't seen. We're in a hurry to unwrap those guys now, aren't we? Well, I think that'll be the the ripple effect for other teams. Is oh, where's our guy, and when are we going to see him? <laughs> so it was a terrific or start. They'd want to be better than Rochelle. He went at six, or they want to be <laughs> yes. better than you know. The recruiters are feeling the pinch already, Jared. A high bar is going to be set on a few fronts. There were the old bees as well as Cripps, Dangerfield. Gunston, Rouse and Manchild, so he can be an old bee. Oh, he can't be an old, he <laughs> can't be an old bee. He's as young as young. Uh, so you've got the Carlton crew in the best bits. This midfield, Jared, they're not as deadly as the previous Carlton crew, but they just might prove as effective game day. They're killers. They are hunters and gatherers. They, they love – their big bodies in the midfield love impact – you know, Paddy Cripps was absolutely back to his best. It's a different method now to stop It used to be grab the ball, kick it as far as you can, take the take the 40 metres, take the 30 metres, take the dump kick. But now that the game's all about punish, and make no mistake, whether it's from clearance or from turnover, how do you get that on the scoreboard is everything. And, and we'll talk about that specifically in a moment. But Carlton have now put damage to their contest work. So it's... Win the ball. We showed it last week on 360. Win the ball. If you can hit that first handball, whether that's backward, sideways, or forward, terrific. But the next one must go forward. We've got to take ground, get the ball in deep, in, as deep as you can inside 50, and then everything else works. The pressure smalls get involved. The talls, who failed last week? Yep. They got one goal out of their, out of their key three. So for, for the rest to cover that shows you that this midfield has had a day. And... and yeah, everyone you talk about in footy is, is, is those that know are looking for something different with Carlton. 
And we're all looking for the defensive difference. You know, how will Vossi, what will it look like defensively? Because that was the only thing that Teague didn't have. Okay. Well, he's doing it. He's defending not with the football by getting it in so deep. Not by hanging on to it, chip, chip football. So Cripps, Kennedy, Hewitt's been a steal. And Chera, I know they paid a lot for Chera. And, and, and they won the race for Chera in a lot of ways. So I'm not going to count that one so much. But when Walsh comes back, he, he's their maximum damage player. So to, to put a performance like that up round one, and we know Richmond are gettable in the middle, so we want to see it this Thursday. So can you do that to the dogs who who put everything into their midfield? So that's the fascination for me, and it's come quickly. Yeah. It's the perfect matchup for Carlton because they say, okay, great, great. You've got Richmond who don't overinvest in their midfield numbers and have never been a good clearance team. So don't get too carried away. Can you do it against the best, one of the best midfields in the comp and who overinvest, who roll an extra number up, so you're not playing against six, you're playing against seven? See how that goes. And if they do make another statement, the Carlton crew, look out. You'd set the terms for the debate last week. Should a second-year rebuilding coach beat a first-year rebuilding coach? This was North Melbourne and Hawthorne yesterday. And Hawthorne, despite... Um, a few bumps on the way to the game, which were not insignificant to say the least, uh, they proved the better. They proved the better. Oof. Absolutely they did. And so I've, I've been waiting to see what it looks like for the Kangaroos. You see Craig McRae come in and go bang. That's what it looks like. That's how we play. That, that, that'll that carry them. You see Vossi come in, first game back as a second time senior coach. Bang. That's the way they play. I'm thinking, okay, Still yet to get my absolute grips on what the kangaroos are doing. Now that, that's not having a go at the coaching or anything like that, but we just want to see it. I'm I'm just a fan in the stands, Jared. I, I want to see what it looks like. So when you when you line up with a taller team than most and you go with three tools, it's different to the competition. Difference good. We like different in footy, but it has to work. If it doesn't work, different can become dumb pretty quick. Okay, so what are, you, what are you looking for when you go tall? Because you're sacrificing that forward half turnover game. You're sacrificing a lot of pressure on the ball, the ability to lock it in your forward half to save your back six. So if you've got an undersized back six, like a Ben McKay goes off injured and, you, and you're undermanned and you've got Zeeble versus a tall and you've got, you've got Core versus a bigger opponent that, he, that he'd naturally like, then there's no other way of saving them if you're not locking the ball in the forward half. So to stay tall... You want to mark the ball inside 50. Well, if you only take if you only take eight marks inside 50 and you give up on the pressure game going the other way, I say that plan ain't helping you. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the alterations are this week because the post-match press conference, David Noble said, no, that we, we, you know, God, God, Goldstein took a couple of marks and you know we like what this person did and we spoke positively to the players. If you stick with that plan, Jared, it has to work. So do you go with the same plan again? Because it, because we were told judges against like types. That that they were David Noble's words. Okay, Hawthorne are a like type. So you've been beaten by their ability to to hold up down back early when the Kangaroos held sway at clearance, and then they just slowly took over the game. So again, I'm looking for round two. I'm looking for selection. I'm looking to see if Goldstein starts on the ground and in the ruck. I was surprised that he started on the bench at the round one, the mm-hmm. opening bounce of the season. A guy that's played 270 games at a pretty high level. I question that. But okay, if it's changing of the guard, well, that's the decision you make. But again, when you make these calls, they have to work. So you talk about in the post match about the discipline of your team and all. So what, what, what's the shift? Round two's, round two's big for the Kangaroos at selection and with their methodology. Okay, so we run PFI right from the start, preliminary final integrity. What are you doing that if it gets you to that weekend, will it stand up or not? And that was squarely on Geelong as to how they would present in the new season. So we were together in crunch time. We spoke to Chris Scott. Then we went inside and wondered what we'd see. It was like the bloody years were back, Kingy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked about this game, didn't we? Like, so from an Essendon point of view, you, you couldn't allow your, your defenders to be caught 
one on one against Hawkins and Cameron. If Cameron and Hawkins stayed on the field together for the game, Jared, they're kicking twelve between them. They were on fire early, um, and their conversion was really good. I don't know how Hawkins. I don't know how Hawkins gets that ball to draw left to right eight meters. It was a pretty good way to start. It's wasn't unreal. It? Um, no, they they were fantastic. They, they were they were just awesome. And and no one's talking about um, Brandon Parfit. So I want to throw him in the conversation. Yeah, so Brenton Sanderson was our expert, and he yeah. gave him two votes. There thought, you go. Thought only behind Dangerfield is most influential on the field. Yeah. And I think Chris Scott would have got into the car on the way home, and he would have thought, you know what? We've got our prime midfielder, and we can use Dangerfield in other ways. I think Parfit's going to be a seriously good AFL player. I think he had half a dozen centre clearances on the weekend. He had 11 clearances in total. Um and, and that just allows you so much. When we talk about Sydney having a different mix in the middle and, and it allows you Heaney and, and Parker forward, well, this is going to give so much flexibility for what they do with, with Patrick Dangerfield. And then you get Hawkins, Cameron, Dangerfield. Now, good luck matching up against those three, supported by Stengel, when he, you know, who's going to be a very good acquisition for them. And then Grian Myers, who I still think is a serious AFL player and could kick 50 goals in any given year. So they've, they've got an unbelievable strike power now. And they're playing a different way. So speed on the ball. Take territory. Be happy to have a contest 50 metres down the down the line rather than hang on to the ball and chip it sideways. So the shift for Geelong was evident. In, in a game they dominated, they took 76 marks. That That's not the Geelong we're used to. We're used to them dominating and just slowly just strangling the opposition, having 110 marks. So it's great to see. Um, and, you know, to kick – well, they kicked 20 goals. To kick 20 goals just makes you think even Chris Scott will get, has to get caught up in this and just find out what the levels are. What can we get to? Can we get to, can we get to 25 goals one week? You know, I'm not sure that the roster, I haven't looked. I haven't looked. So they've got it. Sydney on Friday night. They have too. It couldn't they be have. better. Well. So Thursday night's Carlton and the Bulldogs. Yeah. And Friday night is Sydney and Geelong. Yeah, well, there you go. You won't be going to bed early on Thursday or Friday. Get some sleep early in the week, Jared. So that, that's a cracking contest. So I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing if Parfit can do it again, and then when they I'm not sure where Cameron's at health wise, but you know let's just worry about you know we're talking preliminary final integrity. We're talking about things we, that are going to hold up in the back half of the year. You get that forward line healthy into a final series, and they they can they can surprise anyone, Jared. So that's a different proposition to the Geelong that's made grand final preliminary final past two years. They've had to rely on Gary Rowan. This this is a whole new model, whole new model. So we've always worried about Gary Rowan in a big final. I'm not, not talking him down. That, this, this is the reality of, of home and away footy versus finals. And, and that we've labelled that at Chris Scott. We've called him home and away Chris on occasion. And it's, it's, it's not fair. It's, it's unfair, but that's, that's the tagline we've gone with there. This is different. This, this, this looks different. It's more brutal. It's, it's, there's more responsibility shared. And it's more aggressive. We love it. The curiosity, Gold Coast should have won and they did win. But it was a little bit more than that. It was more in the manner that they won and and some of the individuals separate to that. But an eight goal last quarter after, you know, trailing and I guess staring at the oh, we're gonna we're gonna muck this up. They got a they got a better version of West Coast than most had been predicting. Yeah. And I think that's your starting point. Twenty three points up halfway through the second quarter, West Coast and going well, looking like they they they're gonna Shock the world, you know. They're not meant to. Who, who is this? Who are these guys? It's a waffle team. How are they doing this? And their leaders were great. They play with great passion and great energy. Um, so sometimes, as a fan, you may be not expecting the win, but you're proud of the performance. I think all West Coast Eagles fans are saying, "Well done, guys." We're, 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 if you do that every week, regardless of win, lose, or draw, and I heard Adam, Adam Simpson say, "No, this is a, this is about winning," but deep down, he would have been proud of of what the players performed. But so to come back from 23 points down mid-second term and, and just get yourself in the game at the start of the last quarter to see what Raoul did, to see, to see what uh, Rankin did, they were, they were unbelievable, Jared. And I, I just think it was, it was a great moment for Stuart Dew to draw back and say, hey, we, we, we've got something here. They've, got it, they've done it before to us in rounds one, two and three and then fallen right away. This is something that they have to grab onto and, and roll with. And I just saw a... A temper text come through a moment ago about Powell. He he was terrific. 
Nine intercepts, um, three of those intercept marks. Ballard was the same, six intercept marks. But at in, in the end of round one, so I love players that not only win it back, but get you get you going into offense straight away. He's the number one player in the game at creating scores from his turnovers. Powell? 24 points from the weekend. Right. That's a, that's a big tick. I love those players. So he's... Um, He's, he's, I think he's a goal and a half in front of the next ranked player or, or more. So it's a great start. He had a fantastic year last year coming second in the best and fairest or equal second, I think. Um, and he's away again. You flagged Rankin in the lead up to the season? Yeah. He can kick goals. We're not worried about the goals. The goals are, are the end result. But the way he's playing and the manner that he's, he's doing is terrific. Tw- you know, 23 disposals. S- seven of those contested. He's so creative. Like he's just involved in everything. So of his 23 disposals, 11 of those become scores. Now, I know he's in the forward half of the ground, so it's maybe it's clearly a fraction easier for him to do that. But when you think the, the, the Gold Coast only scored 27 times, he's involved in 11 of them. Rao, Rao's involved in, I think, 10 of them. So those two guys are so influential. And when Rao got cleaned up, like nailed, he didn't want to stay down. He wanted to get up and help his team win. And what he did after that, from that point onwards, was extraordinary. So there's, a, there's a, so much to like about this group and and what Stuart can do with them. On a table of second curiosity, so we had three games to work with on crunch time on Saturday when we, we worked towards this. So the, it was a great return to footy and 362,874 partook in that. And we reconnected it with what we'd been denied in a lot of ways. The games had been rigged to break the all-time record. They, they had It was genius scheduling and putting the 10 Victorian clubs against each other and four of them at the MCG. It was rigged to break the record. And it came up significantly short of the 400,000 of 2017. So there's a few layers in behind that. One will be COVID hesitancy. Mm. And the other will be what obstacles are footy fans encountering that are beating them? So if I'm the AFL, the first one is hard to gauge. It's hard to understand the COVID hesitancy in the community other than to acknowledge that it's real Mm. and to be grateful for the crowds that turned up. But every game failed to hit the projected marker. And that was true in the limited crowds of last year. Each game fell short of what the possibility was. The second is acute. What are the obstacles and how can you smooth them out? And this is everything from barcoding, to ticket access, to car parking, to public transport, to getting a pie and a beer. And every layer of that, I think footy fans are are feeling, and some are clearly making the choice. It's just too hard. And if you, the problem is, is if you break our cultural habit, how hard is it to reinstill? Like the cultural habit was to go to every home game and probably a bunch of others. The cultural habit in cricket is to go once a summer. Mm. So cricket goes, how do we get people to go more than once a summer? And so the big bash plays a role in that. So you end up going twice a summer or three times a summer. Footy's coming from such a high base is for most, I think, minimum 11, really, probably much more than that. But the, the habits have been broken across a couple of years. And clearly for some people, it's hard to get back to in the same way. I'd be ears up everywhere if I was the AFL for this because they invited everybody back Mm. and the truth was they weren't ready for everyone to come back because of all the reasons the real world has been encountering for a couple of years. So so give me some ideas to shake it and shift it. Can I give you a couple of small ones? Curtain raises, a a no-brainer, and the venues now can handle it. The venues have been an excuse for a long time. They can handle it. The kids being able to go on the ground after the game and have a kick on the MCG or on on um, you know on these venues that are so so gripping. They watch their 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 favourite players out there do their thing, and then they can go out and have a kick. That was a major part of going to the footy when we were kids, and, and that that's been sort of taken away from the this generation. It is a hook. It is, a, it is certainly a hook to stay for the to the end of the game. Now, you're not leaving halfway through the last quarter if the kids want to go onto the ground. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's little things like that. It's not a, 
The experience isn't there at the moment, Jared. The lines are too long wherever you go, whether it's toilets or food or so drinks. So two dollar pies are one thing, but it's no good if it takes you twenty five minutes to get your two dollar pie. <laughs> no, it's, that's a false economy. The two dollar yeah, pie. Yeah, yeah, and this is this goes to staff levels, and that's not easily resolved. As every industry is going through this as we come out of the pandemic, but it is a so the which. The straight up honesty is the round was rigged to break the record to yeah. get everybody back into the habit of going, but there is a reticence, there is a hesitancy that's very real, and it's not easily overcome. But it is it's a big challenge for the game. But it, but if you put on a great product, so the product itself yep. from the weekend will help us next weekend. Um, it there'll be fewer people at the footy next weekend than there were yeah. this weekend. But but you not not. Because, no, for, through no reason of the game, for fault of the game. No, no. The nine I, games were rippers. Is, I do think in 2022, it is a bit more than just the product, though. It is the experience. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, and this is this is true around the world. But it's a hard one to shake, Jerry, because the whole state has to get involved in this. People aren't working in the city. They're not going to yeah, use. Yeah. They're online everywhere. Uh, like, ask any restaurateur about this. Yeah, so, so this is hard. So that idea that, our footy passions would restore everything that that it has restored to a degree, but not to the degree that we would have hoped for and imagined. And the the other problem they've got is 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 it the fans have found things so comfortable at home. And that there was that the the fan survey, the yeah. the AFL Fan Association, twenty six percent of people were now more likely than previous yeah. hardcore footy fans to stay home and watch it on telly than to go to the game. So that was a measurable, and I think that played out. In front of us, so there is, and this is that there's a some of the kick to kick is coming back. So the Macca's kick to kick is going to be at selected games. So in round two at Marvel North and the Eagles at the MCG Richmond and GWS. Right. But again, you have to know. Yeah, you have to know. I agree with that. Like that, the festival of footy at the MCG, what was set up outside was terrific. Except I don't think people truly knew. People were shocked that the car parks were closed. Why is the car park closed? Because oh, there's this great festival put on for you. Oh, really? Mm. Like that was. So there was every reason to go, but there are obstacles that have been encountered. And so, and what's coming through on the text is there are a hundred reasons in a hundred texts, and it's personal to everybody. That's not easy to solve. It's no. not easy to address everybody's issues along the way. The the, the way to, to to solve it long term, Jared, is the McDonald's approach. You attack it through the kids. You get the kids. You get the parents. So I think you've just got to make it a great experience for the kids. And and start from there. It is hard to get adults who are really comfortable watching the footy at home at the moment to get off the couch and get to the footy. The worst bit feels like it could be Port Adelaide's injuries. Oh, yeah. Get the wrong set of injuries right at the start. They were crippled by the end, but it's really – so your long-term ramifications, Trent McKenzie, Aaliyah Aaliyah, Xavier Dersma, the critical mass of injuries in the first game – yeah, and I'm, I'm looking at the fixture and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, if they're going to come, when do you want them to come? So they've got Hawthorne next week, the Crows the week after, and then Melbourne in round four. Then they go Melbourne-Carlton. That's a pretty tough stretch there. But it's, it's not a bad time for them to have, if you're going to have them, have them have them now. But what, what always happens, and we don't do it on the run and we should, you look back once the year's finished, the healthiest team wins the flag. If you're amongst the top five or six teams, the healthiest team wins the flag. Look at Melbourne last year. Port Adelaide have had no injuries for two years or very few injuries for two or three years and haven't won it. Brisbane have had a few but not, not majorly impact, impacted and haven't won it. You've got to win it when you're healthy and you've got to win it when you're good. What should happen with Rioli? So I'll remove what will happen yeah. and just pose the question what should happen. Well, we should have a, a separate table for head contact for starters so this matrix that you work through to me is just not right the starting point for bumps to the head or the decision the action to bump someone in the head region so the the robinson situation should be a, a two-week starting point this should be a two-week starting point it won't be it, it'll be a whack with a wet lettuce leaf again and in round one we'll have two one-week suspensions for 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 the ability to cause serious injury and that was the wording that um, the potential to cause serious injury was the wording that, that uh, Brad Scott put into the, the table or into the discussion for, for Chris O. We'll use it. Use it. I, I, I don't understand why we're doing one-week suspensions. That, that was an inch off 
And I know it wasn't significant force that Robinson come with, but he made the decision to turn. He made the decision to turn because he knew contact was coming and he was an inch off severe spinal damage yep. to Dersma. He's broke his collarbone. That shows you the force that he hit him with. This was just as bad. This had Harbrow Lewis all over it, the Rioli Real case. And if he gets one week, that's not changing behaviour. So you either take this seriously or, or don't tell us you are. So it's a straight-up suspension in your mind. 100%. For those who are, uh, I can't quite understand the opposite view, but that's okay as people hold it. Is that's, you know when that happens that that's a suspension. But, but even in the coverage, and, and th these guys d did a great job. It was a fantastic game, well called. But they got excited by the clash. And there was no discussion about the health of the player. I can't tell you whether, whether Matt Rowell's injured right now. I can't. I can't tell you what head trauma he, he suffered yesterday. Because he got up, everyone says he's fine. I can show you 100 past players that got up, Jared, and now can't scratch themselves, can't function, can't live a normal life at 40, 50 years of age. So the cost far outweighs one action per round, two actions per round. Stamp it out, stop talking about it, and do it. It's round one we're doing the same dance we did last year, the same dance we did the year before. We were told this was going to change. So we'll find out today whether it's changed or not. I don't want to hear about it anymore. I want to see it. Uh, seedings, where do you want to start at? Four or one? Four. I've, I've had to slip the cats in. I didn't think I'd do this. I've put Geelong at four. Yourself? Now you do four up and then oh, I'll give you all oh, I've done. Oh, that's cheating. That's cheating. Now Geelong, really strong. Made a statement. Parfit led that midfield admirably. I've gone Sydney at three. They're a chance to finish one or two in the next few weeks, Jared. It's big. It's a big game this Friday night. So good. Um, but I love what they're doing. I love the energy in which they play and the pressure they put on, the pressure they handle, and the strike force they've got in the forward half now with Parker, Heaney, Franklin and co. Yes, Papley's not even in there yet. Mm. So look out. Brisbane at two. Although it was a really strong win on the weekend. Didn't play their best, but uh, found a way to get over a quality opponent. And the demons, you just can't budge. Mm. They uh, they have got a plan that is hard to break down. Yeah, I like what you've done. So my only rule was only winners need apply. Only winners. So it doesn't mean the other nine are, can't be anywhere, but they can't be in the seedings this week. So I've got the same quartet. I've got Brisbane at four, who if flag would probably enter. You had them there. I didn't. Uh, it's just, like you said, not super impressive, but got the win. Going to be frighteningly hard to beat at the Gabba. Geelong at three, some of what they did was eye-popping. Sydney, two. Sydney actually, they had the best win, but they can't displace Melbourne at one. So We've jumped off the dogs quick, haven't we? Only Richmond, because we they Richmond didn't the win. Flick. Yeah, but as I say, only... No long-term relationship. Losers here, need not apply for the seedings we this should, week. We leave them quick. Yeah, of course we do. Oh. Just win. And then come back into the conversation. I've heard you were like this. I didn't think that was true. <laughs> Seedings are for winners, Kenny. <laughs> Good means test. Go on you, mate. The round one means test. We'll pop it up as a podcast. Take it in and keep corresponding as we go. Robert Craddock coming up. The third test starts at four o'clock today.